Hi, my name is Mario Vano. Um, I operate amateur radio station AE0GL, and like all amateur radio operators, I have a, um, a deep interest in uh, analyzing my signal and uh, taking measurements uh, of radio frequency signals. I just thought I'd show you how I use a Siglent uh, 1204XE oscilloscopes um, math functions, particularly the fast Fourier transform, to do um, signal analysis uh, as a uh, sort of poor man's spectrum analyzer. Um, this is just going to be an introduction to the subject because it's a very complicated subject, but um, for the moment we're just going to set it up using a whip antenna to look at some local FM broadcast signals and you see the final result here um, loaded from a preset. So to show you how to do this, I'm going to start by resetting the oscilloscope by pressing the default button. Now I'm going to press the auto setup button so that we have a useful starting point of the signal being picked up. This is a, um, uh, a simple 19 inch antenna of the sort that's uh, commonly used for 2 meter FM connected to a T connector and a terminator um, so that um, we pick up some of the uh, FM radio s stations which have very strong signals in my area. Um, in most areas there are enough uh, FM radio signals to do this. If you live a long ways from a city you may you may have trouble doing things this way, but sometimes you can connect an external antenna to do this kind of simple test. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is press auto setup. As I said, this will bring the signal within range and the sweep rate within range. We don't really care much about what we're seeing here. Uh, it's mostly all sorts of garbage being picked up by um, the antenna. As you can see when I move around it, some of it's um, much lower frequency than we care about. But it, it brings the signal within the useful range of the oscilloscope, which is why the button is provided. The next thing we're going to do is, is use the math operators of the oscilloscope by pressing the math button and select an operator. In our case, we're interested in the FFT, the Fast Fourier Transform Operator. And once you do select it, you see that there are a whole bunch of new tabs uh, revealed on the bottom because this option has a great many um, options, sub-options uh, that need to be set to get useful results from it. There's a lot of interaction between the uh, sweep rate and the sample rate of the oscilloscope and the fast Fourier transform. It can only work with the number of samples that are provided within the time period you're interested in uh, by the sweep rate. So varying the sweep rate will change the appearance and behavior of the FFT enormously and choosing it carefully is probably the most important thing you need to learn to do to use the um, uh, oscilloscope as a spectrum analyzer. Now, because most of uh, what we've done here was selected to make things um, the default, uh, we don't have much to set. Uh, we're using channel one, and the, the gain setting should be correct. Um, and, uh, uh, sorry, the um, uh, channel's um, um, attenuation setting should be approximately correct. So what we're going to do is uh, start by adjusting the vertical and horizontal rates So if we go to horizontal, we're going to set a center frequency for the analysis. And we do that by pressing the uh, center button and adjusting the frequency for, we're, we're going to set it for 100 megahertz, which is the middle of the FM broadcast band. There's a lot of acceleration on this um, multifunction dial on the oscilloscope, so it's a little touchy to set up. 
which is why it's, this takes can take a little time, especially if you're trying to do it without getting into the shot. <laughs> so we've set 100 megahertz for the um, horizontal frequency, center frequency. We're now going to set the hertz per division. Now, right now it's set to 50 megahertz, which is far more than we're interested in. I'm going to go back to about 2 megahertz per division, which should show us a number of FM broadcast stations. Now, you'll note that the analysis isn't showing much useful right now, and that's because we're operating a very high sweep rate. So we are not collecting very many samples. I'm going to start turning the sweep rate down. And as you see, as we do that, we're starting to actually see the FM broadcast stations in the area. On the other hand, because the sweep rate is slower, it takes a long time for the information to be collected for the fast Fourier transform. I'm going to settle at about two microseconds per division here for a starting point. And you can start to see we already are seeing the individual FM radio signals. If we go back and select the vertical options now, we can select some more useful settings for measurement. So I'm going to set a wider range on the um, scale, a, a wider range of display, that is to say a, a narrower view by setting uh, 10 dB per division. And I'm going to change the units to dBm, which are a more familiar unit for this kind of work. Then I'm going to set a reference level that's a little bit lower because um, uh, the signals are not very strong coming in off this whip antenna. Don't forget that, it, that a lower reference level will be a higher number of negative dBm. Returning to the higher level menu, we can now change the configuration so that we can have a more useful display. Right now, we're using a split screen display, but it's usually a little bit more useful to have a bigger display. So if we go to full screen, it will superimpose the um, time-based display from the oscilloscope with the a frequency-based display from the uh, Fourier transform. Backing up again, we can change the mode. I think we would like to probably average a little bit because um, these signals are going to be jittering around a fair bit otherwise. Going back to our um, vertical settings, we can now start to optimize the relationship between the channel gain and the FFT settings. Usually, you want to make sure that you're not overloading the channel. If you do, then the accuracy of the readings comes into question. So obviously this would be too much. If you don't have enough signal to work with, weak signals 
will disappear into the noise, as you see happening here, and the dynamic range of the measurement is affected. So you have to set a reasonable value. Usually a comfortable display level is what you want. But it always pays when doing a spectrum analysis to, to try to bracket the uh, levels by testing a little bit higher and a little bit lower and seeing if things are changing. That's a tip off that you're doing something wrong. Now, going back to the top level FFT menu, there's another tab called Tools, which is very useful for these purposes. Um, it allows us to manipulate markers. And I'm selecting markers on peaks in the Type tab on that submenu. And now it's automatically placed markers on all the high level points. We can fine tune the way this works, but we're not gonna play with that today. This is just, just a, a, uh, an introduction. Um, you'll have to learn to make use of these for yourself. Um, we have a number of other options in this menu. One is to show a table of these, which is very useful. It's even more useful if we add a column for the frequencies. And once we've done that, you can now see that we have um, quite a number of FM radio stations being displayed on these markers. We can reset the markers in case things change by switching the sort by amplitude to sort by frequency and back. And of course, we can also sort the table by amplitude if that's what we're trying to do. For example, if we're, we're trying to look for spurious signals. Sort by frequency is what we're going to stick with for the moment, though. Now, we're ready to start experimenting with um, how we can use this. So, I'm going to um, start experimenting with, with moving in somewhat to a narrower view of the signal. FM broadcast signals get very interesting, typically at about 200 kilohertz per division because the overall broadcast signal is about 500 kilohertz wide. Now you'll note we don't have very much resolution right now. And that's because our scan rate is too high for, for what we're doing. It doesn't collect enough samples um, per unit of time to do what we're trying to do. As we vary the sweep rate, however, we collect more and more samples. The price we pay is that the display takes longer and longer to update. Once we've done that, you can see that we, we have zoomed in on the radio station at 100.3, um, and we, we have quite a bit of information about it. You can actually see the sidebands and the, from the digital modulation from the additional subchannels it transmits. I'm going to try to move the center frequency. And now you see we have the um, 100.3 megahertz signal fairly well centered. I'm going to now adjust the hertz per division to 100 kilohertz, which is providing us a surprisingly nice um, view of, of the sidebands and the modulation. Of course, these are just snapshots. For any useful measurements, we would probably be wanting to put tones into a transmitter. Now you can also see that, that um, 
the Graticule is providing us a lot of information about the levels of these peaks and um, um, the frequencies of the, the sidebands that we're seeing. Uh, just to demonstrate that, the, that this is really meaningful information, I'm going to move the antenna. And you can see that the whole display has shifted by about 10 dB. Now, th this took a lot of setting up, and you don't want to be going through that all the time. Uh, the, the key to successfully using the um, FFTs for this kind of work to take measurements, um, because you'll probably be taking the same measurement over and over while you work on things, is to save your settings using the scope save and recall functions. And w once you get a starting point like this one, for looking at an FM radio station uh, at fairly narrow bandwidth, you probably should save the setup using the save button on the oscilloscope. And, and I, I usually save it to a, um, um, uh, an external flash drive so that I can take it away and file it with the project I'm working on because I work on a lot, a lot of projects. But you don't need to have a flash drive in there. The scope has some internal storage. Um, once you've saved um, this FFT setup, uh, you can recall it any time and use it as a starting point by just tweaking the um, center frequency uh, resolution and any other settings that you need. As an amateur radio operator working on uh, QRP transceiver design, um, I have a set of settings that I use uh, that are centered in the amateur radio bands, the HF amateur radio bands, and that I can uh, call up um, easily to, um, to get the oscilloscope ready to take a measurement. Uh, and in most cases, the only thing I have to adjust is the um, attenuation level and the um, 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 reference level on the uh, FFT display. Um, and that's very useful. I, um, the, the display's resolution uh, is adequate uh, between 3 and 30 megahertz for harmonic measurements, um, all the way up to 100, uh, 200 megahertz, and for measuring intermodulation distortion with a resolution of about 500 hertz which it which is um, quite nice for uh, working with uh, single sideband transmitters. Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's just an introduction to the subject, and it's a complicated subject. But if you've never tried the functions in your oscilloscope, you should take a look at them. Um, the controls seem to be a little clumsy, and on different brands of oscilloscopes, the capabilities and the um, clumsiness of the setup vary a lot. Uh, I find this Sigl Siglent SDS-1204XE that I use to be very useful um, for my purposes, but other, you know, your mileage may vary, as they say. Um, so, um, if you've never tried it, though, you should take a look at what your scope can do for you. Um, this is no replacement for a proper spectrum analyzer, but um, in many cases it, it does the job for um, casual design work and testing. Uh, thank you for watching this video.